Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from Interest.co.nz and welcome to our special weekly currencies report. Never a dull moment with Dan Bell from High FX. Welcome in, Dan. Thank you, Bernard. We have not had any dull moments this week, um, starting overnight with the European Central Bank telling people that it wouldn't print money to buy bonds, which really caused uh, yet more ructions on the market. How did the market react? Indeed. So the ECB last night uh, cut interest rates by 25 basis points to 1%. Um, they made some other announcements around the collateral rules for, um, you know, for exchanging funds with various banks and the like. But they didn't make any, any comments about uh, beefing up their bond purchasing program. Um, in fact, they actually uh, referenced, uh, referenced some recent comments that they made and clarified that um, it's not the ECB's role to, uh, to start um, getting in there and buying up all these, uh, these sovereign bonds. Because everyone had been baying, hoping, mm. praying for the ECB <laughs> to jump in there, buy all these bonds off them and boost prices, bring down yields, bring down the interest costs mm -hmm. for these southern European governments. But no prospect at the moment. We're going to have to rely on whatever comes out of the summit yep. uh, over the next day or two to um, rescue the euro. And yep. it's not obvious that's going to happen. No, exactly. And I think everyone got disappointed last night because there's a realisation that um, you know, we've got this European summit tonight, so we've got all the leaders and policymakers getting together to you know, come up with another, another step in this so-called comprehensive resolution. But I think everyone realises that they can't really do uh, enough unless the ECB are, uh, are also going to be participating. So overnight everyone got a little bit disappointed. We saw stocks down a good one and a half, two percent in the US. The New Zealand dollar fell from up almost around 79 cents to where we are at the, mo at the moment around 77.20 and uh, commodities and other currencies down across the board. Extraordinarily volatile too, with just headlines moving um, currencies enormous amounts. Yeah, exactly. I mean this morning we had uh, there was a leak out about some draft document that's uh, being discussed at this European summit. Uh, apparently, Germany has has um, has turned around and, uh, and and is and is putting a bit of pressure on some of the details of this of the the way the ESFS and the ESM are going to be combined. Um, so we actually saw markets come off 50 basis points, and that was just on a on a singular headline. There was no backup or, or any reference to to the actual uh, discussion itself. So. It's very fickle out there. It's um, you know we are moving into this December liquidity where you know it, it can get quite quite choppy, as um, as a lot of investors sort of take their money off the table and and finish up for the year. There must be a few exporters and importers preparing for Christmas. You must be thinking, hmm, it's going to could be quite volatile over the next um, few weeks, month or two. Are you seeing people say, okay, I'll try and sort myself out now, so I'm not worried over Christmas. Well, you'd think that. I think a lot of people um, will still keep an eye on things over Christmas, New Year's. Um, certainly for uh, a lot of our clients who, um, who, who are business owners and are involved in their businesses on a day-to-day -day basis, I think they'll be inclined to, to keep an eye on things. Um, you know, we can see quite wild, volatile swings over that period. So for importers, for example, everyone's looking back towards that 80 cents as a magic level to try and take advantage of, uh, of the Kiwi dollar back up there. Um, for exporters, they're hoping that this current downtrend has, has further to go. So um, overall, people are starting to, to make a few decisions into next year. Um, and and I, I, I still think it's going to be a reasonably, uh, reasonably volatile few weeks into the first, uh, first, first few weeks of uh, 2012. The other big news this week was the Reserve Bank of Australia, which cut its official cash rate mm -hmm. uh, by a quarter of a percent to 4.25% mm -hmm. on Tuesday. Uh, what did that say about the state of the Australian economy and what did it do on, on, to currency markets? Yeah, so all the central banks are referencing this European debt crisis as a major concern. Uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia uh, cut interest rates and that's the second rate cut. Um, so they've got an easing bias now and the market's pricing at another two rate cuts in the first half of next year. Um, and also employment figures out of Australia are actually showing that uh, employment growth in Australia for this year, this calendar year so far, is the slowest it's been since 1996. So um, a bit of a slowdown in Australia. Uh, we, you know, if you look at the household and retail sector, certainly very, uh, very patchy. Um, there, there's still quite a big pipeline of investment activity and resources and mining. But if you talk to the average Australian at the moment, they're actually um, they're not all that upbeat. So uh, I think the Reserve Bank of Australia will need to cut interest rates further into next year. And the relationship between the Australian and New Zealand dollars, how did that um, fare this week? 
Yeah, well, we thought it might have actually pushed up on the back of that rate cut, but um, the Kiwi Aussie rate is still struggling around 76 cents, uh, and that's still not far off those 20-year lows that we had earlier this year after the Christchurch earthquake around 72 and a half, 73. So on a historical basis, the Kiwi dollar is still quite weak against the Australian dollar. Great for our exporters who are exporting to Australia, not so great for our importers who are bringing goods in from Australia. But uh, I think the uh, the Kiwi dollar probably has a little bit more upside potential from here, given the outlook for interest rates in Australia and given the Reserve Bank in New Zealand was pretty much uh, sticking to the script yesterday that they were going to be on hold for a while. Yeah, let's talk about that. Not too many surprises, but um, also he was quite reluctant to even talk about a rate cut of any type. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't really reference anything about a rate cut um, in his uh, in, the, in the main part of his statement. He he removed any any reference to a rate hike. But uh, if you if you actually dug into the detail, um, it, it does appear as if he's still got a tightening bias. So, um, yeah, I think um, if you're betting on the Reserve Bank of New Zealand raising rates, you're betting on the, the European um, European crisis being resolved in the first half of this year, and. Uh, I don't know if I, if I see that happening personally. So, um, yeah, rates to stay lower for longer. And next week we've got the Federal Open Markets Committee of the US Federal Reserve meeting for a decision. It's been one of the reasonably bright spots in the global economy in the last few mm. weeks, the American uh, economy. What's it, happening there? Yeah, it has. I mean, the US employment figures last uh, last week were, were stronger than expected. You're seeing unemployment starting to, to push a little bit lower in the States. Jobless claims, which is a, a measure of the, the number of unemployment benefits that are being paid out every week, continue to fall. They're at their lowest level since uh, since February this year. So overall, there's there's a little bit more there's a little bit more strength in the U.S. economy, and I think um, the FOMC announcement next uh, next week may reference that. Um, you know, monetary policy uh, has been a key driver and is always a key driver of the currency, and was certainly a key driver of why the New Zealand dollar pushed up to that high this year of over 88 cents against the U.S. dollar. It was more a case of U.S. dollar weakness due to the quantitative easing and money printing that the Fed were uh, were undertaking. So I think if the Fed starts to um, starts to th- you know talk a little bit more bullish about the US economy, um, suggesting perhaps that we're not going to see any further rounds of quantitative easing. That's going to be a positive for the US dollar and naturally a negative for the Kiwi dollar. And we've seen the gold price really come off its peaks. There's talk about money printing in America and no money printing in Europe has has, uh, got people worried that there's not going to be nearly (laughs) enough money printing to support the gold price. Yeah, that's right. I mean, gold is, you you know, Investors use gold as a safe haven in times of turmoil, but overall they're also using it as an inflation hedge. So prospect of money printing, uh, if if we're not going to see this sort of debt monetisation from Europe like everyone's sort of predicting, then uh, gold isn't quite as attractive in that environment. Looking at the ranges for the Kiwi dollar versus the US dollar, the euro and the pound, what are you seeing? Yeah, well, I think we're uh, we're sitting around support against the US dollar at about 77 cents. Uh, we saw a high overnight of around seven, just over 78.50. So for now, the range is 77 up to 78.50, 79 cents in the Kiwi versus the US dollar. Against the Australian dollar, we're sitting around 76 cents. The range there is around 75.50 up to 76.50. Quite a tight range against the Australian dollar. We tend to be quite closely correlated with the Aussie US. Uh, against the euro, we're a little bit lower over the last 24 hours with that risk aversion overnight, um, but we see it still trading between 56 and a half and 58 and a half. And against the pound, also a little bit lower, sitting just around 49 and a half p uh, after being just over 50 p. And we tend to be a bit a bit of a slow moving uh, slow moving currency against the pound, so expecting that to stay within the range of. Uh, to 48.50 up to 50 and a half. That's what I find the great irony in this. There's all this talk about a euro collapse and meltdown in Europe and the New Zealand dollar falls versus mm. the euro. It is, and I mean, it's always counterintuitive. And, um, you know, but if you look at the capital flows, I suppose, you know, our currency relative to the euro or the pound is, is still a, lo- a much, much smaller currency. And when investors want to take their money off the table, they can do so. Uh, pretty quickly in the currency markets, they can push a button and, and sell as, as many dollars as they want to, uh, and that has you know typically a bigger impact on the New Zealand dollar because we are less liquid. But um, you know we have seen these drops in the New Zealand dollar against the euro and the pound over the last few months, and they have been short-lived. So I think exporters or anyone sitting on euros or pounds, it seems to me that those drops in the Kiwi against those European cross rates tend to be short-lived. Uh, and there is more of a tendency for us to, to remain in a, in a broader uptrend against those particular currencies given the uh, situation up in Europe. So maybe an opportunity for exporters when those prices dip down. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, if you look at what's happening in Europe, we know that it's not going to go any, anyway, any, any soon. And the situation in the UK also pretty average. So um, 
you know, I think this part of the world is probably a better place to be. Certainly at the moment as we head into summer, although we may have to leave our phones on in those summer breaks with all this turmoil in Europe. Dan Bell, thank you very much again Thanks. from High FX. Another of our Never a Dull Moment weekly currency reports. I'm Bernard Hickey for interest.co.nz.